Hopefully everyone can see that. Um, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Um, I am going to present uh, some examples of a couple of tools that have been developed in relation to IP and HS and uh, a few other um, collaborative research projects that have been designed to open up interoperability of images or uh, facilitate collaborative discussions about semantic modeling. Um, they've been used in various uh, instances and projects, uh, uh, internationally and nationally, um, and just wanted to allow people to see the types of things that we've been trying to do, particularly uh, during the COVID pandemic, to open up digital resources and collaboration. So uh, to begin with, um, in the previous project to Iperion uh, HS, Iperion CH, there was a specific deliverable looking at semantic modeling. So basically trying to uh, specifically define the relationships between information so that computers or different uh, uh, institutions or collections could connect their data up using a standard uh, vocabulary and, and ontology. So this ontology is the CDOC CRM, uh, it's a standard ontology in the field. And the deliverable itself uh, was full of a large number of these rather complex models. Um, these ones were uh, modeled in Word uh, and they were a bit more complex to do and it had to be done in Word to make sure they would fit within the structure and format of the deliverable. But every time they needed to be edited, very careful readjustment needed to be made of all of the uh, parts of the models to ensure they fit within the space requirements for uh, the Word document. So an alternative approach, which allowed more rapid creation of models that were easy to replicate and reuse was, was really required. Um, Following on from there, we've, we experimented. There are lots of modeling tools out there, but we were looking at uh, web-based ones to facilitate collaboration. And there was a particular model uh, looking at an online uh, uh, JavaScript library called Mermaid, which can allow the uh, rapid creation of fairly complex flow diagrams and models. But as you can see, the syntax was, was still quite complex. So what we did uh, as part of the shock project uh, is we were looking at uh, translating all of the semantic models created during the Iperion CH um, uh, deliverable into dynamic editable models that were generated on the fly within a web environment. And we have hit uh, a lot of the complexity uh, shown in that mermaid uh, diagram and broken it down to the input only needs to be simple tab separated triples. So you can have complex models like these or simple flow diagrams or work plans. Uh, Joe is giving this talk um, as a simple relationship. So as you can see here, the, the, the information is broken down to a persistent identifier, uh, identifier has type person uh, and has type related to the AAT, but it's, it's only this, the core building blocks of the information that's required to build these complex models. Um, now, all of those models uh, are now available and they're up online on GitHub um, as part of the shop work and they're available for people to explore and point out errors in. Uh, they were a couple of years old now, so um, some movements in the CDOC CRM and our understanding of its use have moved ahead, but all of them are up there as work examples for people to explore. Now, when it came to uh, further work, uh, within IP and CH and Shock and uh, another project called Link.Art, part funded by a uh, part of it, which was funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council. Um, we were looking to do more work with modelers, uh, semantic modeling and workflow modeling. And it wasn't really possible to do this sitting around a table with post-it notes, which is the uh, common uh, way of doing it uh, because of COVID-19. So a dynamic online approach that was uh, simple for people to use was developed. And effectively, you can drop uh, tab separated triples or just copy and paste three uh, columns from a spreadsheet directly into the tool, or even sort of make use of a, a JSON LD document uh, straight into the, the flow diagram. Um, and you can actually then share these models as links. So the system looks a bit like this. I've, I've zoomed in to see the top of it. Um, the triples themselves are put into this text editor. 
uh, you can simply hit refresh and the model is recreated down the bottom. Um, uh, you can maximize either the triples or the model to have a better interaction and to be able to see the information. There are a number of examples in there and links allow you, as I said, to share the model or even jump to the Mermaid Live Editor to uh, get PNGs or SVG downloads of your models. Now, the links look quite tricky to uh, drop into chats and these sorts of things, but effectively all of the data in the model is encoded into a very long URL. Um, but it does make collaboration uh, a, a lot easier. Now, uh, to try and uh, provide instructions of how this modeler works, um, it keeps changing. So I haven't actually written uh, a specific instruction section uh, on the website yet. But the landing page provides a model which gives a worked example and explains the process of how it works. Um, I've got a slightly, sorry, there. Uh, it actually explains how the, the structure works, how the formatting works to create this particular model with these colors and these relationships and even sort of subgraph structures to try and manage and organize relationships. So a worked example is given, so you just edit it and change it and, and it will show you exactly how the system works. Um, one of the other examples includes uh, a, a whole swathe of different colors and shapes um, that have been defined for particular modeling within the CDOC CRM or the link.art ontology. And these can be applied to your model by simply dropping a subject pipe object uh, into the fourth tab or the fourth column in your Excel spreadsheet. So if you wanted to, uh, uh, to link an object to a thing, you would essentially have the word object pipe which is the uh, straight up and down vertical line thing in the fourth column and your two uh, objects would be formatted as such. So there's quite a range of different colors and, and structures that can be used. Uh, the system continues to be used by a, a number of different institutions and uh, initiatives. Um, Shock, ICROM, National Gallery of Art, Philadelphia Museum and within IP or NHS, as you can see this very zoomed out uh, workflow of the uh, first draft of uh, data management uh, workflows and uh, data uh, set uploading into data repository structures that we've put together for IPA and CH. Um, so you can come out with very complex models in it, um, uh, um, edit them and change them as you need. Now, moving on, as we don't have a lot of time, to the second section. Uh, I'm going to talk briefly about a way of improving uh, the interoperability and collaboration of the International Image Interoperability Framework, or IIIF. It's an international standard with a very large uh, welcoming community uh, who look at trying to uh, establish standardized ways of sharing and presenting high resolution images and video and audio now and almost 3D uh, on the web. Um, to give you a very sort of simplified idea, is effectively uh, all of the key information about a given image, uh, its content details, its license, related information of objects and such, are encapsulated in a standardized JSON document called the IIIF Manifest. These simple text documents can be shared and copied and sent all around the world. And if they are dropped into a compliant IIIF viewer, such as Mirador, uh, the example you can see here, uh, the images will appear and they are served from the hosting institution using a IIIF server. So the images themselves are not downloaded or moved around. They are maintaining connection between the researchers and the uh, hosting institutions and all of the information can come with those images. So the idea is you can design, it's designed to allow images to be dynamically displayed together from multiple locations. So the screenshot here, you can see a, a National Gallery uh, image, which is hosted in London, a uh, particular Turner painting directly compared with uh, another Turner image from the Yale Centre for British Art. And both of those images were being served directly from their hosting institutions. Now, IIIF strongly promotes, uh, sorry, just yeah, yeah. Uh, strongly promotes the fair usage of images, but uh, IIIF resources themselves are still a bit difficult and time consuming to find. Individually, institutions that do present them, uh, you may have to search their online connections and look for small IIIF logos to identify IIIF manifests and, and links. 
or if you're looking on mass, some institutions are providing direct computer or searchable APIs where some of this data can be found, but it is still quite difficult to, to explore. Now, the Iperion HS project aims to organize complex data sets of heritage and heritage science data, which may be linked to a range of FFF compliant images. So the question uh, for this particular piece of work was how might one use a simple tool to increase the findability and accessibility of these images and also connect different collections together, so the interoperability idea, while hiding the complexity of complex searching systems like Sparkle. So this is the solution, um, and it's been built over the last few months uh, uh, in collaboration with three different projects, so the Shop Hyper NHS and uh, UK funded IIIF, Practical IIIF project. And the idea is you have uh, a website with a standardized IIIF viewer, a simple Google-like keyword search can be sent to a IIIF endpoint that's then translated into the complex APIs presented by a given institution, and it will return you a list of IIIF resources, which are then formatted and placed into the viewer. So uh, from a user's point of view, none of the complexity of the IIIF standard or of the APIs or of the viewer structures uh, need to be cared about. All you need to do, look at, you don't need to worry about the ontologies used in the API and the data structures, just I'm looking for images of trees um, and back they come. So there is information on the example website about how those endpoints work. Um, and uh, I'm actually sort of updating this to make it even easier, uh, but the current information is there and it converts those simple keyword searches into complex API calls and returns all of the IIIF information back formats it and, and presents it for you. So I'm not going to sort of read through the, 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 all of the details here on the right, but all of that information is on the website, which I'll share a link to at the end. So the actual presentation side is based on a system called SimpleSite, which is a, a GitHub based system for creating web pages, collaborative web pages, uh, and that has been uploaded into Zenodo as well, so it can be accessed in Zenodo or GitHub. And the code for the actual simple IIIF discovery system is also uh, up on GitHub and Zenodo. But effectively, at the moment, we have six uh, institutions in there. So the Art Institute of Chicago, the National Gallery, the National Gallery of Art, the Smithsonian, the VNA, and the Welcome Collection. And you can search through millions of IIIF compliant images with a simple text search. Now, I should say the Smithsonian connection is currently down uh, in the last week due to some changes in their server setup, but we'll add that back in as, as soon as we can. And you can actually choose between whether you're going to look in Open Sea Dragon, so see one of these grids type things, or uh, a mirror door viewer, which provides a lot more um, information related to the objects and licensing and, and links back to the collections. So bo both options are available. So effectively, you can run a simple query here for, say, Castle. And this combined search uh, has returned uh, 8,736 objects uh, in relation to uh, those six different collections. And you can see that, as I said, either in an open sea dragon or within the Mirador structure, where you have a lot of the titles and, and metadata coming with it. Um, here are the two URLs for the, the two systems. They are both live and running at the moment, or they were before I started talking. Um, and they can be explored and looked at directly. Um, I'm quite happy to uh, uh, take questions on either of them. I should say that the IIIF discovery system is open for other collections to be added in, and uh, we're working with uh, a number of other collections to add them in. And uh, as I said, I'm trying to make that easier and easier to do. Um, and now given time, I will stop there. Thank you very much.